Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Marriage Bootcamp Season 16. I think it's episode 3. We shall see. I can't remember. This is a cut and paste type of review, okay? Because I don't feel like watching it and taking notes and pausing and rewinding. So, as I'm watching it, I'm coming to y'all giving y'all what's happening, okay? But the first things first, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel to become a whole J-Bird. Jay Bird, dun 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 dun, and all that goodness and stuff. Mm, send to yourself, send to yourself, and all that jazz. Okay, you can also follow me um, on IG and on Twitter at J underscore Lee's underscore Corner. And don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Now, I want to say last week I commented in my video how Stu Michelet's boo was all in my comment section, spam, spam, spamming it up. Well, Stu reached out via uh, Instagram and he DM'd me and he apologized. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And he kind of explained that he didn't realize he was spamming people, but him and his team felt like people did not know who he was and so that's why they were like saying certain things about him you know on the show or whatever so his team was supposed to like reach out and like try to let people know things about him so his team then went and was commenting in people's comment section his website now i looked at his ig and he's a chef. He's a whole chef that was going around doing this and doing that or whatever. He seems to be a successful chef. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I'm happy that he at least reached out and explained what happened. Which let me know either him or his people was watching my review. Okay? But it's cool. I don't mind, you know, someone again putting one little thing in here or whatever. But I'm like, I guess they didn't realize YouTubers don't like that. <laughs> we don't like when people um, comment or hope and stuff or whatever. But I get... What he was trying to do, because again, you don't want people not knowing who you are and commenting about you. But again, Stu's a chef, a successful chef, it seems, and his food look good, honey, on his IG page. But let's move on. So, at the beginning of the episode, we see Michelle and Stu talking. Why? Because Michelle, again, tried to pawn Stu off on Jocelyn, okay? So, we see Michelle outside doing some arm you know what she was like she was watching on watching off you know what i'm saying and she was like yeah you know <laughs> she was talking to the ballistic you know what i'm saying but i'm sorry i didn't mean to pass too off on Johnson. i don't think she likes him or whatever but it's okay and i just want to say i'm sorry so we sing that whole thing and bullet say you know he don't think that uh Stu like Johnson. i don't think that Stu like Johnson. i he don't even know that lady. She may be pretty, but I don't mean he like her. You know what I'm saying? We then see Michelle Lance through talking or whatever, and she also apologizes to him. I'm sorry for trying to pawn you off, but I was really just trying to say, put you up on the block and see who wanted you. And I'm like, that same thing. Same thing, okay? But they seem to have made up from that, and he like, she need to take that whole pawn thing and put it somewhere else and sell it for $2, because no one wants to be pawned off on anyone else. I'm like, so we see Bianca and choice is a choice choices okay options. Bianca and options is in the bed. She looks to be asleep. He's on the phone. We then see he gets up and goes downstairs. And he's also lifting weights and she's in the bed still asleep. But she's in the bed asleep and you hear a phone ringing, 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 vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. And it's his phone. Okay, it's options phone. So Bianca gets up, looks at the phone and realizes, oh, he talking to some girl. You know what I'm saying? He's holding other conversations with women and she says how you know options keep girls in his back pocket because he always wants options i mean his name is options or choices or chosen i mean i don't i, I, I guess so but she goes downstairs and there's a t-shirt and what looks to be panties i'm like put some pants on girl put your booty cheeks up or whatever and she's like i'm your dumb ass i think your dumb on the phone and she just tosses the phone at him and said that she ain't talking to nobody the rest of the day my thing is you can't be with a man who you know talks other women but you're upset that he talks to other women if you know that he keeps women in his back pocket what you mad for you already know leave him so Jocelyn then come downstairs when she passed Bianca she speaks and Bianca doesn't speak back Bianca just smiles at her you know keeps moving or whatever so now Jocelyn feels she got she had to speak to me because I'm a dawn Okay, you speak to Don when you see one. Okay, her I, I knew that she'd be trouble when I got here because her energy and Belisa was like, You mean she reminds you of you? Jocelyn trying to say how Bianca seems to be trouble, how her energy seems to be off. She is you, she is 
you. And I think Jocelyn's issue is someone else is in the house who will turn up just as much as she will. So she's not getting as much attention as she, I think she thought she would. Um, but Jocelyn, you are too old to be beefing about with, with Bianca. Leave that little girl alone, Jocelyn. Worry about your own shit. Is she in a bad mood? She don't have to speak to you. You not a Don. Have you dropped an album? Neither one of y'all have dropped an album. Y'all is in the same boat on the same show with, with troubles in y'all relationships. Girl, I could not. Okay, a whole bunch of foolishness just happened. So, Bianca is upset with options, choices, and chosen because of the phone call. Okay, so she's upset, don't want to speak to anybody. Jocelyn is upset because she spoke to Bianca, and Bianca don't want to speak. So, now she keeps calling Bianca a bitch or whatever, and she's also sitting around with the other couples as Bianca's sitting around talking with Dr. Ish. And I'm like, why she got this thing on her head? What that's about? I mean, if your hair not done like you can't just take it off, I'm just so confused, okay? So, Bianca's talking to Dr. H about what's going on with her and why she's upset and stuff. And I'm like, girl, take that thing off your hair. So, she's saying in that part how, you know, he be lying, he talking to somebody else, she saw it on his phone, and, you know, all these things about they passed and when it would break up, how it made her feel, and she was also anxious, and all this stuff. Just a, a typical things of how you feel if you find out your man is cheating or talking to someone else, okay? And how he would ignore her when they broke up. I'm like, if y'all broken up, you can ignore a person. But that conversation is going on in that room. Now, with all the other couple, with all the other couples, okay, and options, you know, they're like, well, what's wrong with Bianca? Now, Jocelyn is being a bitch and an adult bitch, if you ask me. Saying, she keeps calling Bianca a bitch. She keeps saying how I am saying, they not, she don't keep, she not gonna keep being nice to her, you know what I'm saying? We, I don't have to, I'm like, why do you care, Jocelyn? Okay, and I like how Shawnee, CeeLo's fiance, is like, you know, well, I gave her a hug. Sometimes we have to embrace people when they are in their feelings or whatever. And you can see that Jocelyn is trying to make Bianca out to be the one bad apple, okay? Let's all, let me let me get them all on the bandwagon of not liking Bianca. Because Jocelyn doesn't like Bianca. I can appreciate the fact that Shawnee, um, Oshawa, and even Michelle a is not allowing Jocelyn to make them get on her bandwagon of not liking Bianca. And they're all saying, no, we have to support her. We have to support him and her because they're the youngest or whatever and help them fix this. Jocelyn, you a red ass bitch to sit there and try to downgrade, not downgrade, but try to uh, speak down upon Bianca when she is young like you. I just don't like that. You, 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 ooh, you ain't nothing, Jocelyn. I just, I just can't take it. Anyway, you know, when Bianca finished talk, talk, talking to Dr. Ish and she comes out and she hears all the other couples talking about her, not negatively, but they're just speaking on how she's upset and how they have to support her, or whatever. But she just hears they talking about me. It's like I don't like nobody talking about me behind my back. Okay, if I'm out here, they don't talk about me. I'm like, first of all, you won't talk to them. You're not there, and they technically were not talking about you. They were speaking in positive lights on how to try to help you. But I digress. That then brings about the conversation about what's wrong with her. And so we come to find out the girl who she seen in his phone that morning is the same girl that she beat up. And <laughs> Michelle was like, the $200 uh, Uber ride. Bianca called a $200 Uber ride to find options. And some girl he was with or whatever, and she beat the girl up. So this is the same girl he's constantly or consistently having a, con a conversation with now. And so Bianca's pissed. Like, we here for 10 days. You can't not talk to her for 10 days? Like, what? What's the why are y'all here? If this is an issue to where you... It's like Lil Mo and um Carl. When he was there and he was still talking to girls. And he, it's just stupid. So Bianca's upset because he isn't acknowledging what he's doing to piss her off. And I like how Styles P said, you know, Bianca is taking everything that he's doing to heart. So she's really feeling it. Like she's she's really feeling it. And because he has hurt her in the past, he can't really address her because he's already done so much wrong. And so it's just they can't communicate the right way. It's really, really, really what it is. And they're young. They're children. And then he's admitting that he usually does have a few girls that he's talking to. Then why are y'all here? 
bitch, I don't get it. Okay, so we have that whole thing go out. You know what I'm saying? We, we see she has a reason to be upset, even though the way she's reacting is not the best. But again, she's young and dumb, whatever. But it's still her right to feel how she feels. Jocelyn keeps taking it personal as if, oh, well, bitch, I ain't talking to you because you didn't speak to me. I'm like, bitch, Jocelyn, this has nothing to do with you. And you see Ashua. And Shawnee trying to explain Jocelyn, this has nothing to do with you. She's just upset or whatever. Even if she came in, rah, 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 she's in her feelings and it has nothing to do with you. And Bianca saying, bitch, it ain't about you. I'm, this ain't got nothing to do with you. I, I'm having my own stuff. And Dr. Itch come in and kind of calm down, calm him down. But Jocelyn, she ain't shit. After they kind of separate everybody, we see Ajua, Dr. Ish. And Bianca in the living room. And Bianca's saying, like, I don't get why Jocelyn is making my issue her issue. Like, I don't get what's going on or whatever. Jocelyn then comes in. And she then says, you don't like me because I'm beautiful. You've been looking at me since the first day we got here because I, cause I'm beautiful. You jealous of me because I'm like... Really? And you really just sit here and yell and cuss and fuss at Bianca and says her issue is that you're cute as if Bianca is in the fucking gorgeous chocolate skin little Barbie doll. Girl, the fuck bye, okay? Jocelyn is acting like this is like love and hip hop. Like she's not acting like they're in count. She's, it's, it, it was crazy. It was stupid. So she goes outside and Bianca gets up and it's Bianca, Dr. Ish, and, and, and Jocelyn or whatever. And Jocelyn's making it seem as Bianca's issue are, 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 they're minimal. Okay, you can't be acting this way or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Your itches aren't that big, you know what I'm saying? And that's how she's talking. And Bianca like, but this is how I like this, but this is how I feel. How can you act like how I feel doesn't matter? Like what, what I'm going through real shit. You don't have kids and my baby daddy trying to get my daughter. I'm having a fight every day for my daughter because we're at this point in time, Stevie and her was going to stuff with the with the baby. And so she's making it seem as if your stuff doesn't really matter in the, in the, in the long scheme of things because I'm going through something that's more important or, or more serious than you. And I love how Ajua came up and said, let me interject, okay? And she was like, you know, my daughter committed suicide because she was upset that her girlfriend, had, her and her girlfriend had broke up. And I was, and it, it. Oh, I was like, damn. Meaning, Bianca is having these emotional outbursts because the man who she loves isn't loving her the right way. And so she's just feeling all these feelings. And at one point, she she contemplated suicide. And she's like, so Bianca reminds me of my daughter who needs help and guidance because when you're in this spiral... You are only thinking about this one moment. You're not thinking about your whole life in totality. And for me, I felt like Jocelyn should have felt stupid. Because you are making it seem as if because your issue with your child is more important than her issue with feeling that she is in love right. You know, they don't match up. It's just two different issues. And Dr. Ish told, told Jocelyn, you ain't here for Bianca. So she's having whatever day she's having... It don't have nothing to do with you because you're not leaving here with Bianca. So stop worrying about Bianca. But I love how Audra came in and kind of just like put a, a voice of reason in it. Meaning, Jocelyn, you can't complain about how Bianca feels because my daughter felt that same way and killed herself. So that's how serious about a, a person's emotions can be. I was like, come on, Ajua. I like Ajua. Mm-hmm. I do. So they then get into the exercise of the day where they have half of the people go and have a pool party in the backyard. And the other half is on the inside watching. Okay, so uh, Chosen, Jocelyn, Stu... Ajua and Shani are at the pool party outside and of course their mates are on the inside and then from what we've seen so far we see Stu say like you know all the girls here could be my type you know what I'm saying this is what Michelle has been saying does he know I can hear him no he does not Michelle but I feel like he wasn't saying oh yeah I'm happy here all these girls are my type I think what he meant was her, if she sees this, she's going to say, 
all these girls are my type because that's what she's always saying, okay? We see that part. We see uh, Ajua sitting by the pool with some little white dude talking to her, whatever. And, you know, Styles peace out. Like, he feel like she should leave him because she's such a good person and he kind of has been a shitty husband here and there or whatever. But when she asked the dude, like, cause like yeah, you know, we can, like, go out and hang out or whatever and your husband won't know, she's like, no, he'll, he'll probably know, okay? But do you know what tribune is? When she said, do you know what tribune is? I say, is Ajua a lesbian? Is she bisexual? I, they must have threesomes because tribune, you know, is what le- lesbians do. They be scissoring or whatever. So we see Michelle like I don't want to see this. I I don't I don't want to see y'all having showing me stuff. And girl, we don't care. It's okay, let's do be stew. Um, we see Shawnee. She just talking like she being real regular, or whatever. But the guys are giving her attention, which makes CeeLo say like I want her to have that, but I don't want her to abuse that. I'm like, what? Why? Okay, I, girl, I don't know. But let's let's see who else does or says something. So, as we see Joseph in the party just talking to other women or whatever, Bianca say, oh, that don't get me mad. Like, I don't I don't care about that. They're like, didn't you drive a thousand miles in a hundred minutes or whatever for a girl? She's like, well, no. And when she explained, I said, oh, I guess that makes sense. She's like, random girls doesn't offend me. Like, I don't care about that. But when you're focusing on one girl and giving that one girl attention, that's what pisses me off. I'm like, okay. Meaning he can be out here smoozing with random chicks um, at like a party or whatever. Like, oh, hey, hey, hey. But when you are consistently dealing with one girl, that's going to make me beat somebody up. I said, I guess that's what's going to happen around here, girl. I guess so. So, they're sitting there watching, and Jocelyn is being Jocelyn, having a little twerk contest. She asked one girl to skinny dip, the girl got naked and skinny dipped. It was a whole mess, okay? It was, it, but it's a, I, I don't know. If you were at a party, what would you do? I don't, I would, I don't think I would ask anyone to strip. Um, but I'm 38, so it is what it is. Um, but, uh, Ballistic is upset. Okay, he's upset because she, you know, having all that going on. She twerking and checking her ass. She then fed some dude some fruit on his stick, little fruit cocktail in his mouth or whatever. That pisses them off. And then when Bianca say she just told Chosis to not say what happened here or whatever. She just told Chosis to keep it a secret. Let's not tell anybody. And that pisses Ballistic off. And Ballistic does what? Goes downstairs and goes, Ballistic, Ballistic. So, Ballistic goes outside and goes ballistic. He's yelling, he's cussing, he's fussing. Party over. Party over. Shut this shit down. Shut this shit down. Bro, this ain't your party. This ain't your house. You didn't pay for nothing. You, I, look, Ballistic, you see why Joss is with him. Because he's a bit batshit crazy like her. We always feel like, oh my God, she got a guy who's not crazy. No, he's crazy. That was the real Ballistic, okay? Yeah, he, he knocking over stuff, breaking glasses. I'm like, bruh, that ain't your stuff. And while I feel like Jocelyn was not being, you know, too overly sexual or whatever, I also feel like... She probably does it all the time, and he can't react, okay? For him saying, I was trying to control myself and not go out there. If that was you controlling yourself, I would hate to see you when you're not in control. The only thing was, you told the young bull uh, options to not tell anyone. She didn't say, I was joking. Jocelyn is treating this like... It's a reality show, and she feels like I have to do things and say things to make it interesting. I have to do things and say things to get put on camera to make it be an issue. But she don't realize ballistic will go ballistic, or she may realize it, and she's like, it'll make great TV. Jocelyn said earlier that she doesn't feel like Bianca and, and Options is a real couple. They're just there, you know what I'm saying, for the show. I feel like you and Ballistic are a real couple, but you're also here for what? The show. Styles, he made a great point talking to his wife. He said watching her and seeing how she just kind of behaved. He didn't use the word behave. I'm using the word behave. But how she still stayed true to her marriage. She wasn't out there like Jocelyn flirting or whatever. But she's a grown woman. You know, I think Oshawa, even Michelle and and Shawnee are going to carry themselves as adults, grown, respectable women. That's not going to be Jocelyn, and not even much really even Bianca either. Not that I think Bianca may be out there twerking or whatever, but I feel like Styles P saying to Oshawa, sometimes I feel as if I don't deserve you, and if you were to cheat on me, it's what I deserve because of based on what I've done to you in the past. But he says watching her 
it makes him like respect her more or, or even see how great of a woman she is because how great of a woman she is because of how she cares herself when he isn't around. But that's the, the, the epitome of a ride or die. That's the epitome of a wife. Meaning in, in public, I'm not going to disrespect my marriage even if my husband has done it in the past. I'm not going to stoop to that level. Mm -hmm. So Ballistic is upset. He's upset or whatever. And he's like, you know, I don't expect my queen to act like that, okay? Because I'm a king, okay? And I expect more from my queen. So, Jocelyn is like, you know, I'm sorry for feeding that man grapes. I won't do it again. She then gets on her knees and say, please forgive me. And then she starts crying on the floor. So, where they got to say, no, get up. Get, I'm like, what is going on here? I just wanted him to know that I would never do this again. I'm going to be a chain person. Jocelyn would not be a chain person at all. I feel like... In two more episodes, she's going to be somewhere twerking and feeding the cameraman grapes, and I don't care, okay? But they kiss and make up. They are really doing this for TV, and I don't know why I'm acting surprised because it's a TV show. So then Judge Tova comes out to give the little critiques of the day, okay? And we see what was the, the brainchild behind the party. They had each person... Um, who was at the pool party they had people there that would give them something they needed that their mate was not giving them, okay? And that was the whole point of that. So we see with CeeLo and Shawnee, you know, Shawnee says, well, yeah, I feel like the guys were giving me, they were being considerate. They were considering me and what I have going on. And CeeLo did that when we, when we first met. But it's like recently, like, he can't always be considerate of me. I say, why can't he always be considerate? Like... He too busy to be considerate? How busy can that be? I, not with me. CeeLo then says how we I noticed the guys were being like insistent. And sometimes insistency can seem like consistency. And if a woman is weak within her core, she may confuse the two. I'm like, what does that have to do with the fact that she just said that you are not always considerate of her and they're like CeeLo sometimes you know what I'm saying we were talking about her and you brought it back to you and sometimes it's not about you okay sometimes it's about the simple shit the simple shit CeeLo gosh and then for Styles P and Ajua, she says the guys gave her a peaceful and something else it was peaceful and whatever the word she used uh, a vibe from them um, Styles P said he just felt watching her that he just felt like he didn't deserve her. It made him feel guilty. Again, because he's, you know, he loves her so much. He loves her so much. And she tells him, like, I've never doubted your love regardless of what you've done to me. I know that you love me. Girl, they is a whole different kind of couple that's on a whole other plane. Uh, we're going to be together forever and ever and ever. But that was it with them. Okay. Bianca and Joseph is real basic, okay, because she still says how if she was there at the party with him, she would have turned up too, okay? And he said, right, if she was here, I would have, I would not have acted any different than what I was doing with these girls around here in these bathing suits or whatever. And she also reiterates how I'm not a jealous person for random people. It's only that one girl. And they tell chose this so, well you know the reason you know that you should see the reason she reacts how she does is based on what you do you see she said like if you were having fun with this random girl or whatever like at a party she doesn't care but when you, excuse me when you step beyond that and you um deal with the same women that's what makes her react okay so you need to stop doing that just stop being a cheater i mean gosh so we then get to who? Michelle and Stu. Okay, and Stu's saying he knew or had a feeling that this exercise that she may be watching. So he was, you know, and he was uh in charge of himself the whole time. The whole time. And Michelle then say, This to me seems like the perfect situation for him. Like, I think this is the dream for what he should have. I'm like, what is you talking about? And they look at him like, what? What? She then says she feels like she wants him to be happy with who he wants to be with. But she still feel like it's not her. Then why are you with him, Miss Chalet? She said, you know what I'm saying? I, don't, I just want him to be happy with whoever. And he like, what if I'm happy with you? And she, girl, Miss Chalet is so damaged. And it's sad. Because... The more I look at the episodes, you know, and some of the episode three, but it do seem like he do like her. 
but she just keep acting as if she don't think he likes her. And it's a, it's a vicious cycle, and they just still in it. He's still in it, she's still in it, but the fact that she feels like the dream for her is for him to have what he wants, but she can't accept that what he wants is her. And lastly, Jocelyn and Ballistic. So, Dr. Ish is like, do you see how what happened, you know, whatever. Jocelyn then says, well, I just, you know, fed the dude grapes or whatever fruit to get him out of my face. And Dr. Ish said, well, you don't realize this. He didn't see you throwing grapes or throwing fruit at somebody across the room to get him out of the face. What he seen was you feeding another, another man grapes that like he was in his house and that was disrespectful. She then said, I guess you're being really extra right now. He's like, oh really? So is knocking over palm trees extra? Is knocking over glasses extra? Is storming out here and creating a whole scene extra? You want to get your foot? He's saying all the things that her and Ballistic did all the day that was really, 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 really extra. You can't act as if everybody else is here and you're not at fault. He said, you know, the consequences of the, the, your actions are not innocent. And she seems to think they are. And I'm happy he pointed that out, okay? Because you can't say Dr. Itch is extra after your man came out, stormed out, knocked over palm trees, glasses, busted through doors, y'all were yelling and cussing and fussing the whole time. That is completely Extra. Uh, Judge told her to tell Johnson, like, you seem to bypass what he needs and always focus on what you need, and that's not what he needs. He doesn't always need you to need what you need. Sometimes he needs what he needs, okay? And then Johnson then says, I realize now that, you know, what he needs is for me to be a respectable lady and to treat him with respect. I'm like, you didn't know that? Like, how as a woman do you not know that a man wants you to respect yourself and not to respect him? So the last two conversations we see going on, we see Bianca and Options talking or whatever, and him saying, you know, I keep Options in my back pocket because I never know if you're going to flip out and leave me and be gone, so I keep these Options. It's like, see, but I don't think that way, okay? Because when I'm in it, I'm in it. I don't want a man who want to keep Options in case I'm not there. Get you Options once I'm gone. Period, okay? And then we see Shawnee. Um, Ballistic, Michelle and Stu at the table eating. And Shawnee tells Stu, I have never seen you show attention to Michelle since we've been in his house. The way you showed attention to those ladies outside, okay? You were very considerate of them and I just haven't seen you act that way towards Michelle. And I'm like, because people say they're not a real couple. But I digress. We shall see. And that's how the episode went off. Girl... These people are crazy, crazy.